uh, with all of the all the information in place. That's absolutely impossible. It's completely impossible. And 30 of these proteins are found nowhere else mm -hmm. but in this little organism. So it had to be designed. It is incredibly complex. It's an atomic motor that does not run on electrons but on protons. Mm -hmm. And an atomic motor that, as you said, can shift gears depending on the medium and the load that it's carrying in the process of biodegrading that medium to reintroduce it back to living systems. I read just days ago that there's evidence that this little whip-like flagellum can, uh, can run up to 100,000 revolutions per minute. Now, that's faster than any jet engine with our most advanced technology today. Mm -hmm. But not only can it run up to 100,000 revolutions per minute, it can stop in half a rotation Amazing. and change directions. Awesome design. Awesome design. There is no way this could have self-created uh, by naturalistic processes, which is the basic issue of naturalism. That is that the universe self-created, self-created all of this, including us. And we, with our mind, able to perceive the universe, actually are a part of the creation of this naturalism. Absolutely. And, and that, is, that is a pagan philosophy, a Gian philosophy. Hard to believe that a Big Bang formed a big rock and this came about instantaneously on its own. And scientists say that a billion of these tiny molecular motors could fit into an area the size of a pinhead. Yes. Awesome design. <laughs> now that's amazing. Eight million in the uh, space of a human hair, the diameter of a human yes, hair, sir. and a billion the space of a pinhead. Mm -hmm. Incredible and incredibly complex. Okay, complex. with only moments remaining. Give us the thrust of what you came to say. Well, let me, let me show very quickly. The DNA chromosome is considered to be the most complex molecule in the universe. And yes. one mathematician and molecular biologist estimated that the odds of just one DNA coming about on its own by random chance in nature to being 1 in 10 to the 100 billionth power. Well, what kind of a number is that? Well, 1 in 10 to the 50th power is considered absolute zero. You're right. Now, repeat those figures again. This audience needs to know what you said. Repeat that, please. He calculated that the odds of one DNA chromosome arranging itself by random chance in nature to be one in ten to the one hundred billionth power. Well, I wouldn't suggest anyone play this, but in Arizona we have an, a weekly lottery. And your odds of winning the lottery every week, 52 weeks a year, for 27,000 years in a row, is better than one DNA arranging itself on its own. And evolutionists need billions of DNA, not just one. So they're going to try to get us to believe that life has been created in the labs, and they'll fool kids with these demonstrations. But if you look closely, what they've come up with is some non-living chemical compounds that, correct. that are found in living matter. It would be like us creating some calcium, and since calcium is found in humans, announcing we've created a human being. They've come nowhere near creating life in the lab. So what we need to realize is the world's brightest scientists, building on years and years of other scientists' research with billions of dollars of lab equipment and computers thrown in, cannot make living matter, excuse me, non-living matter, produce living matter. Yet they're teaching that rocks and seawater did it on their own. But wait a minute, not today when you could test, study, and observe it long ago and far away when no one was there to see oh, it happen. Absolute speculation. So the issues are clear. We're dealing with scientific facts of only life produces life absolutely versus speculation that it came about in a way totally inconsistent with the laws of science let's give one other statement and then we'll close the program i think this former harvard professor and nobel prize winner says it pretty well he says I do not want to believe in God, which is his choice, and I feel bad for him. Yes. But he goes on to state, therefore I chose to believe in that which I know is scientifically impossible, spontaneous generation arising to evolution. Any knowledgeable scientist that really deals with the issues knows Darwinism is impossible. They believe it because they don't want to believe in God. You, that is the bottom line. Russ, you've done a splendid job of declaring the truth today and organizing these facts and I recommend you to this global audience. Thank you, sir. Now, let's recommend the one who can make the difference. We've learned today that there are issues involved in answering these four questions. Who am I? 
Where did I come from? What's my purpose here? And where am I going? The issues of facts, scientific facts, versus Darwinism. The issues of supernatural origin, which is the only way we can interpret the first law of biogenesis and the laws of physics. Someone had to establish these laws. We operate under them. So the issuance of life had to come consistent with these laws. So today we've examined briefly issues of Darwinism, supernaturalism versus naturalism. And while Russ Miller has taken us through this brilliantly organized bit of truth for you. The Spirit of God has been attendant to these words. And at this moment, there's no question that he is speaking to your heart. Wouldn't you like to make peace with the God who made life itself and made your life possible? Jesus Christ came, he died, shed his blood, was buried, rose again, ascended to heaven. And now in a universal dimension, he is embracing you, knocking at your heart's door. Would you simply open your heart and pray this simple prayer? Just pray it with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner, and I need you. I need your forgiveness. Right now, I open my heart's door. Right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come in. Step in, apply your blood, cleanse me with that blood, and save me forever, and I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, the God of the universe stepped into your heart. Welcome home. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.